Welcome to the channel and today I'm going to share with you 13 things that will absolutely kill your holiday budget. With the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season, many of us find it helpful to create a holiday budget. That alone is fantastic, but did you know that many of us, me included, create budgets that are destined to fail? Why? Because we create our budgets around things that quickly drain our resources, causing us to overspend, obliterating the budget completely. But by eliminating these 13 items, you will find that you're able to stick to your holiday budget year after year. So, without further ado, let's get started with number one, no budget. The quickest way to kill your budget is by not having one to start with. Many shoppers trust in their ability to keep up with all their holiday shopping solely in their heads, even though they have yet to have that way work out for them. More so than laziness, this usually comes from shoppers allowing the stress of the holidays to cause them to rush. Don't rush with your budget. Stop for as long as necessary to create a budget, even if it's just a piece of paper with the maximum you're allowing yourself to spend at the top and a list of everything you buy below, subtracting their costs from the maximum spending. Number 2. Last out the door to maximize savings, you have to maximize what you can accomplish in the allotted time. The holiday season is just that, a season. So like every other season, it will pass. Within the holiday season, there are early periods, general periods, and late periods. Well, actually there's just early and late because with shopping during the holidays, if you're not early, you're likely late. Once you've created a budget, you need to actively put that plan into action. Of course, we need to double check our budget before rushing out the door, but we can't sit around and let the opportunities to save pass us by. Many stores want to get a jump on their competition, so they have sales weeks and months prior to the start of the holiday season. The savvy shopper will be looking out for these and grabbing the items they want before the first holiday decoration hits anyone's front yard. Be ready to shop early because that's where most of the savings will be. Number 3. Poor Resource Utilization That's just my fancy way of saying use what you have. From decorations to wrapping paper to the ingredients you need for that famous holiday dish you like to make, many of us can save our holiday budgets by first shopping at home. Throughout the year, family needs cause us to buy a variety of items. A child may have a school project, or you may get the urge to jump on a do-it-yourself project. Whatever the case, we collect an assortment of items that we could use during the holiday season, but a lot of the time, we neglect to look around and end up purchasing something we already have, possibly at a higher price. And the last thing you know, we threw the receipt out when we cleaned out the car yesterday. Be a friend to your budget by rummaging through your closets, garage, and junk drawer to see if you can save a few dollars by using something you already have. Number 4. Comparisons Keeping up with the Johnses is a well-known phrase that means comparing your life to someone else's to the point that you'll sacrifice your resources just to stay even with them in your perception. Essentially, you'll go broke trying to be like someone you're envious of. This should be an obvious budget killer. If you can't afford to decorate your house as luxuriously as your neighbor, don't. If your child is sure that they're just going to die if they don't get the newest this or that, assure them that you live despite not getting many of the things you just had to have at their age. The key here is to be content with what your budget allows you to get. Since a lot of the things we buy during the holiday season don't make it to the next holiday season, why kill your budget trying to be like others who may be in deep debt just to maintain that lifestyle you're needlessly jealous of? Number 5. Credit Cards This may come as a shock to some of you, but credit cards aren't the friend they appear to be during the holiday season. Why? Because the very concept of credit tempts us to overspend, killing our budget. Yes, doing things like using your credit card rewards points to buy gifts and travel for free during the holiday season is a big benefit to your budget. But if we plan to use our credit cards to buy products instead of using cash, debit cards, or gift cards, we run the risk of rationalizing an impulse purchase since we feel we have time to pay it off. If you absolutely have to use a credit card to purchase items during the holiday season, set a max within your maximum credit limit so that you stop yourself from later regret. Number 6. Lack of Boundaries The holidays are about family and friends and love and joy and all those warm feelings we all enjoy. But one budget killer that gets overlooked stems from our fuzzy feelings. The holiday season is the time when we're usually our happiest and so we're usually more open to suggestion and impression. The kids want to stay out a little past curfew. Sure, 
Cousin Ed needs to stay over a few extra weeks, the more the merrier. Well, the lack of boundaries eats up your budget because those extra hours on the town means more money going to the car and Cousin Ed really does love to eat, not to mention the extra hot water being used for his showers. There is nothing wrong with being generous and charitable. We should all seek to do more of it. But if you have the tendency to be laxer with your boundaries during a holiday season, make sure you at least include the possible extra costs in your initial budget. You don't want to be a few days into the new year already stressed because your water bill is three times its usual amount. Use some credit card points and get Ed a nice hotel nearby. Number 7. Stocking Stuffers I'm sure we have all watched a cartoon where a pebble rolls down a mountainside and slowly turns into a large snowball before smacking a character into the snow. This is essentially what stocking stuffers can become. Stockings have been a Christmas staple for ages and many of us still enjoy hanging them and filling them with various goodies. They're not seen as actual gifts but more like an added bonus to the holiday. We love them is what I'm trying to say. Well, these goodie bags can drop kick your budget to the mat. How? Because we tend to overdo it. Instead of purchasing stockings that are pre-designed, we decided to let everyone make theirs unique. This means more materials needed to be purchased. Or the bigger point is we want to make the stocking stuffers personal, so we buy different items for each individual stocking, trying to tailor it to the person. These are both great ideas but should be done strategically. For instance, only make very personal stockings for the immediate family. Any other stockings can be generic with generic stuffers like candy or dollar store toys. The joy will still be there, and so will your budget. Number 8. Forgetting the accessories I'm sure many of us have experienced this. We get to the store and see that we're not too late to buy that special present for a loved one. We rush to grab it and pay before anyone can beat us to it. We smile the entire drive home because we know they really wanted this gift and we got it. The big morning comes and with excitement in their eyes, they tear back the wrapping paper and scream with joy as they realize what they got. This scene plays out every Christmas all around the world. And so does the next scene. They'd rip the gift open and push the power button and nothing. You forgot the batteries and yes, it was clearly stated on the box that you needed to get them. The holiday season is full of accessories. If you buy the gaming system, you have to buy games. If you buy a turkey, you have our budgets can be killed in a flash if we don't factor in these accessories. We tend to jump on the big things and overlook the small ones. This means we have to go over our budget on multiple shopping trips because a Nintendo was nice to have. But if you didn't have any cartridges, you just had a gray box. Number 9. Food Now before you go off in the comments, hear me out. Food is a staple of the holiday season. The two are inseparable. I'm sure we all have a dish we look forward to during the holiday season. Food becomes a budget killer when there's not plan. The thing here is that we get used to the same dishes each year that we lock ourselves into only serving those dishes. That would be fine, but we tend to cook the same amount each year even though things like the pandemic and gas prices have caused less and less of us to gather in as big of a group as we used to. This means a bunch of leftovers that are going to expire sooner than later and money thrown into the trash as we realize we can't eat it all. Creating the entire holiday meal plan while setting your holiday budget will help you to keep food costs low. Another key is to get a headcount as early as possible and make sure that those who RSVP understand that any surprise guests might not have a plate, so you need to be alerted to changes as early as possible. Number 10. Crossing Accounts what is crossing accounts? This budget killer is when you don't separate the money you're going to spend during the holiday season from the rest of your usual expenses and savings. Yes, all of your money can come from the same bank, but simply withdrawing on your account anytime you want to make a purchase can lead to you losing track of where you are with your budget and going over it fairly easily. The trick here is to either place the amount you plan to spend over the holidays in a separate account or withdraw the full budget at one time and keep it on you, or even to set a daily spending limit so that you physically can't buy beyond that amount. This will help you track how far into your budget you are. Crossing accounts where you'll take from your savings one day and from your checking another is a slippery slope we must avoid. Number 11. Browsing. A holiday budget no-no is going to a store without a plan. Here, I'm not talking about the amount of money you plan to spend, 
but rather going to a store not knowing the purpose of the trip. I want to point out that I totally understand that we sometimes get dragged to the store by friends and family who love to shop more than we do. This isn't talking about those types of shopping trips. Here, I'm talking about when we grab our wallet and head out to the store because we have some free time or it's nice outside or we're just in a great mood. There is nothing wrong with browsing while you're enjoying your day, but as long as you have money in your possession, you're risking blowing your budget to smithereens because your money is at the mercy of these crafty retailers. You can be a very strong-minded person, but the retail industry hasn't been around this long without having some surefire tricks to get us to spend. Even though some of us can use our phones to make purchases, try to leave as much money behind when you know you're just going to the store to look. If you go out and see something you really could use, make note of it, go home and price shop, and then make the purchase. Your budget will be much happier. Number 12. Obligation Gifts These are the gifts we feel bad about not giving because they're usually tied into a larger group setting like work, school, or the place where we volunteer. They are also the types of gifts that can destroy your holiday budget. The issue here isn't in giving these kinds of gifts. The issue is that we either forget to prepare for them when we make our holiday budget or the gift giving is too much, but we won't set that boundary. If we know we give our coworkers gifts every year, why not decide on what kind of gift we are going to give everyone and what the maximum we are going to spend on them are at the beginning? Or if this isn't a good year for you to spend on work gifts, why not decline to participate in Secret Santa, but instead invite everyone over for a get together? Never let unnecessary obligations ruin your carefully planned out budget. Now, before I give you my final budget killer, I want to thank you for making it this far in the video. If you've enjoyed this content, leave a like, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing and turning on notifications so that you're alerted when I post new content. And while you're here, comment any other holiday budget killers I haven't mentioned, as well as other money-saving topics you'd like to see me discuss here on the channel. And now, our final holiday budget killer. Number 13. Traditions. I saved this one for last because it's one of the easiest budget killers to fall victim to. Traditions run the holiday season. Most of us have more than one that we enjoy with our family every year, be it the annual family photo, matching pajamas, gathering to pick out a tree, etc. They're great ways to accentuate the loving atmosphere of the holiday season, but they have no mercy on your poor little budget. The issue here is that traditions become so automatic in our celebrations that we never think about how much it costs to continue them. Our budgets typically focus on presents and food, but not the custom pieces we make for our traditional ugly sweater party. These outside the budget costs drag us into debt because even though they aren't written down in our budgets, we tend to use the money in our budgets to pay for them, or we take money we weren't supposed to use for the holiday season to get it. No, you don't have to cut out traditions altogether, but be more creative and figure out if one or two can skip a year or two. As they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder, so give a tradition a couple years off and then see how excited everyone is to see it return later on. Or you may just find out that some traditions had worn out their welcome and you were wasting money on something no one was enjoying anymore. Start the new tradition of having your budget survive the holiday season.